Hi guys, Ashley here. Today I'm bringing you Jan Schmerkal. He is the founder of Your China Guy. And if you are a well-funded startup, a financial institution, and you are serious about doing business in China, he is definitely the person that can help you make your first steps in the market. How is coronavirus affecting life in Shenzhen? What's up right now in April? Yeah, well, I think we're kind of back to normal, you know. Uh, of course, I cannot speak for the, you know, economists and, you know, I don't know what's the economy, uh, you know, doing right now in terms of if actually companies are really, really back to normal. But when you look at outside, like people are going back to coffee shops and, you know, back to restaurants. And so, you know, really, I think it has really disappeared, this kind of fear. I I, I thought it's actually going to take much longer. You know, yeah. originally I was like, so you are hey, surprised. I'm, I'm pretty much surprised because yes, we, we were inside for like two months, basically. That's for sure. So it has been a long time. But uh, mm. I also thought that people, after this is all over, after, you know, China is going to take it under control or have it under control, I thought it's going to take a little bit longer mm. before people get the confidence you know, that they had before this started, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty much surprised that we were kind of back. That's right. And Shenzhen is a city of startups. It's a city mm -hmm. of technology. Well, how do you think the startup community is yeah. responding to this crisis? Yeah, you know, I think, again, we could have seen many, many different things that the companies did. And I think even the world is learning from China or, or you know, can or should learn from China, what Chinese mm. companies did. And, uh, you know, I, I see it, for example, from the perspective between China and Europe, you know, I see many European companies basically reacting the same way as China did. And so, mm. you know, that's, that's, of course, using technology to, uh, you know, empower people or enable them to do stuff even in this period, right? Be it all the online education and work from home or, you know, the, the deliveries and, you know, like stuff like that. So, so that's, that's, that's definitely has been a big, uh, big part here in Shenzhen, uh, you know, most of these companies reacted very quickly. Uh, at the same time, when you look at startup community, I'm again, I'm very surprised. I was talking with a friend yesterday and I'm going to meet him today uh, because we have a project that we want to work on. And uh, he told me that actually he's going to an offline event tonight, you know? So basically an offline event is already happening in a, in a startup community uh, in Shenzhen and people just want to get together. People want to do business and stuff like that, you know? And again, I was a little bit surprised, but then when I, when I looked at the bigger picture is that people actually go to gyms now, you know, people, if, I don't know if you know, super monkey, if you have ever heard about yeah, this company, yeah, yeah. but basically it's a company that started from Shenzhen and, uh, you know, they have classes again. And so like, yes, you have to go in with the mask. You cannot just go in like that. And probably they limit the number of people that can be them that can be there at the same time. But like, again, like it's starting, you know, and like people are not really worried. People go there and the classes are full of people. You cannot get in if you want to get in. So it's, it's interesting. You know, I think, I think, you know, we can, we can definitely expect that, the, that we're going to jump uh, back relatively quickly, even in terms of like these events and, and things. That's very interesting because this week is the time when basically school kids are going back to school in China all across the country. And you can see how, again, as you said, you wear a mask, but essentially there's children, yeah. hundreds of children, right, going back. And then the rest of the world, schools are just closing and everybody's saying, are you sure there's not going to be a second wave? Are you sure, uh, yeah. you know, we handled it? Because um, essentially it's a little bit different from SARS, right? SARS was rather localized and it was a yes. lot more severe in many ways, but Right now, the global scale of the, um, you know, of the, let's say, pandemic is quite, uh, quite severe. Um, in terms of the general attitude towards the future, right? 2021 and 2020, for many people right now, are more like this huge dark shark. And yeah. I, I know that in the business community, basically outside of China, people say that, okay, big companies are going to lose a lot of money. Small companies are all going to die out. And mm -hmm. in terms of technology, mm -hmm. we don't even know, you know, how do we get money, et cetera, et cetera. What do you think is the general sentiment when it comes to business community within at least Shenzhen? Is there all doom and gloom for 2020 or 2021? Or is there hope and uh, rainbows? Yeah, you know, again, it's, it's a good question because I, I probably don't have, you know, the data from, you know, aggregate data for the entire industries and stuff like that. So, you know, that's, that's hard to say. Of course, I think it's, it's going to have an impact. And when you look at all the predictions, of course, people are looking at, you know, the economy slowing down 
you know, extensively, you know, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, growth 1%, 2% in China, or if it's going to be 3%, or if it's going to go even lower than that, I don't know. But uh, definitely, it's going to slow down, because, you know, China was on a lockdown for two months, right? And, and mm. you know, even Wuhan was much more severe than any other places in China. Mm. So I think that's definitely going to have an impact. But again, when you look at startup community, uh, also you see that, you know, many of these startups and many of these companies are benefiting very, very much from this, right? Because suddenly you see that people are adopting certain technologies, people are adopting certain ways of doing things, you know, much quicker. And they have no other choice than just to use you know, the startup company or the new, new, new thing or the new technology, uh, you know, to do that, to even live or to even like conduct business right now. So, you know, I think, I think of course, for some companies, it's going to be a tremendous, you know, year because, you know, they, they, they see the adoption mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, for, for the small businesses, it may be a problem, you know, of course, because when you look at the restaurants and when you look at the people that kind of like make, you know, the economy, like the backbone of the economy, right? The services and stuff like that. I think, I think that's still going to take time before they get back to normal. Because even though, yes, I said that they're open now and people go to those places, it's still not at the level, you know, as before that like you would see people everywhere and like, you know, full things and like cinemas are not open yet because they tried to open them and they then said like let's be a little bit more cautious still right and uh you know gyms are open but still they need to limit it because they don't want to really cause anything that like something is gonna is gonna is gonna break again and like you know that would be a disaster right so i think i think we i think there is definitely a hope there is definitely people are trying to do stuff get back to normal they're offering solutions they're showing customers they're like hey you should have confidence in us because we're really taking care of this mm. but uh you know just practically speaking it's going to take some time you know absolutely and i heard it from another friend of mine saying that in china right now if you are a startup if you are a part of one of the ecosystems, which is JD plus Tencent ecosystem or Alibaba yeah. or ByteDance, then you are a big winner. But if you're not part of that ecosystem, you're basically totally left out and you are, this is, this is, uh, this is Hunger Games, right? What's your yeah. take on this? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's a good point. Uh, if you're somehow connected uh, to those companies or even if you're connected to those businesses that uh, basically were alive the whole time. I mean, you know, the food deliveries and like, you know, even, you know, if you're in, in certain, you know, logistics related stuff or if, uh, you know, anything related to healthcare or this kind of prevention, like then, then it's good for you because like people are looking for solutions, you know, people are open to like, hey, how do we make this quicker? How do we solve this problem quicker? Mm. And so they're even open to work with you as a small company if you can offer something that nobody else can or that, mm. you know, that they, they are in need of, right? But uh, absolutely, like I, I think, uh, well, another example is like, I just read this thing uh, about this company, Perfect Diary. I don't know if you know yeah, the company. It's absolutely. The, you know, the direct Cosmetics, to consumer, yeah. The, yeah, mm -hmm. the skincare company. And they raised a lot of money just recently, just last month, they raised a lot of money from, from, uh, from leading investors. And it's because, you know, people, even during the pandemic, even the fact that they were closed at home, they kept buying it. And because they're direct to consumer, they're not really, you know, dependent on the offline stores to sell their products then basically they're benefiting from it, right? And so uh, I think this is, this is kind of like how we can categorize those businesses, right? Exactly as you mentioned, if you're connected to, to, to ByteDance or if you're connected to JD and if you're helping them to, uh, to uh, you know, fulfill the, the higher demand that they had in terms of logistics and whatsoever, then of course you're benefiting, you know? If you're in the, in the direct to consumer e-commerce space, then, mm. you know, probably, you know, you could benefit as well. Some people benefited more, some people benefited less, but again, people are at home. And as you know, from China, everybody is so used to buying stuff online and yeah. like from your phone. And if I am closed at home, then there is no other choice, you know? And so basically if you're again in this ecosystem, absolutely benefit for you, or at least the opportunity is there for you, you know, to, to, to get it. And then when you're outside and when you're a startup that was maybe like struggling to raise money before or that was mm. fighting for those things before, of course, that's hard, right? Because now mm. people are going to be really choosing, like, should I invest in this company? Should I invest in that company? You know, mm. because uh, the economy is slowing. And if you're not benefiting from that specific thing, it could happen. And I've heard stories that like people, people, uh, you know, lost the investments that were already on the table 
or the investments were re renegotiated, you know, because the, mm -hmm. the, the, the investors suddenly see, okay, they're probably going to have problems. We can get a better valuation, whatever, you know, so, you know, that's, that's, that's real life. That's for sure. You know? Do you think China is still an important market? Would you recommend essentially work with international and global uh, startups, well-funded businesses that are interested in China, first of all, in terms of learning, to learn how China did it, and also <laughs> interested to do business in China, like opening up that market, testing it, etc. Do you think that China would still be attractive this year, next year? Why and how? Yeah, you know, again, like many people will say that I'm biased, right? Because uh, I'm here and, and my business is kind of around China. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's just something, you know, to put out there for context. But, you know, I think, I think when we look at the facts, right? When we look at the fact that, uh, you know, China, for example, for, for e-commerce, right? Like China is the mm -hmm. biggest market and, uh, you know, in the world and it's growing and that's not going to change. You know, maybe we have seen some sort of like, you know, bumps, you know, on the road, but like maybe even now, like the e-commerce is still benefiting and like it's going to benefit in the future for sure. And so, you know, if you're a brand or if you're somebody who wants to sell something to China and, you know, maybe has already validated somehow that this is the right market for you, then maybe this is the, this is the good opportunity, you know, maybe a good time because of course everybody is kind of struggling. Everybody's trying to get more business. And so even the Chinese brands are fighting for, uh, or Chinese platforms are fighting for more products and stuff like that. And because everybody was locked down at home and like working from home, maybe they had more time to actually execute on certain things that they wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have time for otherwise. You know, I've, I've heard these stories, for example, you know, from China, but also, also from now Europe, you know, is that, you know, before brands would have hard time to contact, you know, somebody from like Amazon or somebody from these big platforms. And now they're re receiving calls from them, you know, yeah. because suddenly like people are at home and they're like, Oh, I need to go through these things. And like, you know, I'm not so busy. I'm not in the office. And like, and I can, I can handle that. Right. So I think this is also like an interesting way of, of looking at it. Right. That, uh, if, if you planned to do it before, and like you still have the bandwidth and of course maybe your business is still doing okay it's not you know hurting somewhere else because of course if it's hurting somewhere else then you have to take care of that first and then maybe think about expansion but like if you're if you're good somewhere and if you thought about the exp expansion anyways like now looking at you know where the opportunities are and if there are new opportunities that that kind of like came to be because of the situation i think it's definitely a smart thing to do at least look at it right uh, so so that's that's just one, one way of answering your question. And, uh, you know, the second thing is that uh, I've had this conversation with a couple of my friends that do the cross-border business between China mm. and Europe uh, specifically. And they all believe that, of course, China is basically recovering already uh, because mm. now, you know, even in Wuhan, the lockdown is down, right? Like people can go out again yeah. and shop and people can spend money. And of course, people want to spend money. And so, you know, it's, it's very kind of, uh, you know, reasonable to assume that, uh, you know, China is going to recover faster or the first, you know, like when you look at the world that is kind of struggling, you know, everybody's struggling around the world right now, be it Europe or the United States, but mm -hmm. China is kind of getting out of it. So, uh, you know, it's very reasonable to say that like, yeah, the economy is going to be very strong uh, and quicker than, than any other. You know, and so uh, if we're looking at consumption, then probably it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow much faster in China. You know, and so, uh, you know, that's also like a reason why, you know, to to really look at that, you know, and, and see if now is the time I can do something about it. So basically, if your plan in China was a solid plan and it's not just a, you know, just a one time thing, right, then still go into the market. And of also, course. if you are a global company, you want to diversify, you want to make sure that you are in the market that's actually growing amidst the global slowdown that is also um, looking to China. When we talk about entrepreneurship, I mean, we all know and we all love Chinese entrepreneurs. I mean, all yeah. this 996 and, you know, this working culture and desire to innovate and be part of this community. Do you think this uh, situation with the coronavirus is going to reduce the amount of people that are willing to go into business, that are willing to be entrepreneurs, or you think it's not going to have much of an effect? I think we need to wait for that a little longer mm. to, to be able to judge that, but I don't think so. I actually yeah. think that it's going gonna, it's gonna to even increase the amount of innovation, especially in China, because government will definitely put money into uh, certain 
certain industries that maybe they found that they were lacking before, right? Like because this coronavirus have, have, has exposed many, many mm. problems in the, mm. you know, in the society, many problems in the, you know, even in the infrastructure, you know, be it mm. related to healthcare or related to something else. So, uh, you know, I think it's definitely going to support innovation. And, you know, you can see that like many Chinese governments in many different provinces around China are already uh, saying, hey, we're going to invest this much money into this. We're going to build more of this and like, you know, stuff like that. So I think it's definitely not going to, you know, slow down when you look at, again, like in the long term. Uh, but uh, short term could, especially and mm. short term will, especially when you look at the cross border innovation or cross border business. Right. Because, again, very practically right now, if I'm a foreigner, I cannot come to China anymore. Because the, the China has closed. Even you, if you're in Hong Kong and you have lived yeah. in Hong Kong for the whole time, you cannot, if you don't have Chinese passport, you cannot come. And so we don't know how long this is going to take, right? It could take one month. It could take three months. And it's probably going to differ country by country. So if Hong Kong is going to be okay in one month, like if the cases are basically going to disappear, then I can imagine that like people that live in Hong Kong and stuff like that will be able to come to mainland China, but probably not so, you know, from the US or from Europe, you know? And so mm. this is, this is just like, you know, this kind of administrative logistics uh, related stuff that is uh, very important. So people cannot come. That means that, uh, you know, of course it's going to slow down. You know, I, mm. I work with many clients from all over the world or many companies, or I, I've done even before. And, uh, you know, of course, many people kind of see China. We want to learn from China. So we go to China, we meet these companies, we talk to them, we see what they're doing, we experience it. We go to Hema and like we learn how this new retail mm. is going on and stuff like that. But now they cannot do it, right? So, you know, I think, I think it's going to definitely influence. You can do some of it online for sure. You can mm. transfer some of those things online, but not the whole thing. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I think I think what I would be concerned about is like this cross border innovation, cross border business. Like like how do we manage to continue the momentum? How do we manage to help those companies that had the solid plan and long term mm. plan to do something in China? But right now they cannot because they were not in China before and they're not here mm. and they cannot come but still there's a lot of opportunities for their businesses. So like, I think this is the opportunity and this is the thing that we have to think about, like how can we really create that online bridge or virtual bridge that can sustain the momentum in the short term and then we can pick up from there, you know, once everything is back to normal, you know? So I think that's, that's, that's an interesting thing. That's, that's a very interesting question. And that's what you and the rest of Shenzhen community shall absolutely be building. Um, I loved it how you said that startups in China and in general, this innovative direction is given by the China government. And there's yeah. a lot of criticism out there saying that, yeah. oh, you know, everything is controlled. And at the same time, we see the results. Yes, it is controlled. Yes, the direction is given, but we see the results because essentially innovation is through the roof. The number of AI papers, the number of AI on enterprises, etc., cetera, uh, are just through the roof, 5G technology, et cetera, et cetera. Everything is implemented. What is your take on this? The involvement of China um, central government in the big direction of where China is going? Do you think it is good? Do you think it's not good? And what do you think after coronavirus is going to be this direction where China government is taking the country and with it, the whole world? Yeah, you know, again, this is a very sensitive question, right? Because, uh, you know, we can, we can look at it only from the innovation perspective or business of perspective, course. but, you know, it's usually mixed with politics and stuff like that. And, you know, that's, of course, something that I don't, I don't like to get into because, you know, I'm not an expert on politics. And, Only you know, of course, there is many problems that, that every, everybody has. And I don't want to say that, like, China has figured it out, everything. Of course not. But, you know, I think, again, when you look at the, the positive or when you look at the practical, uh, you know, part of it, then, of course, you can see that uh, because of this involvement, because of this direction, because of the fact that, you know, it's not really questioned, you know, in a way, then, you know, people can move faster, right? People move faster, people can do things faster. And when you look at innovation, when you look at startups, speed is what matters, right? Like, it's all about like, you know, you have to be there first, you have to try it first, you have to talk to customers first, and then you can maybe pivot, you can do it better in the future and stuff like that. So I think, you know, when we look at innovation, when we look at 
you know, the direction, the involvement, of course, you know, it's uh, in some aspects, it's really good. Uh, many people, of course, and, you know, I also sometimes, you know, think about like, is, is, is the quantity, you know, really the thing that is gonna, that is gonna solve every problem, right? Like, mm -hmm. so I think we have to look at those things critically and, you know, we have to kind of assess for ourselves, you know, like, for example, if it's, it's, if it's involving our business specifically, like, you know, what, what we can get out of it, you know, how we can leverage it for, for the growth, how we can leverage it for, you know, our operations in China and stuff like that. Not necessarily like, you know, let's say adopting the whole thing, the whole kind of mindset and the whole kind of, you know, way of doing things, but like, how do you, you know, leverage this, this, this kind of, uh, you know, environment that is, that is there, that is in China for the better of your startup or of your innovation, you know, journey in China or cross border, you know? So I think this is the, this is kind of the way I, I look at it, you know, because, you know, it's, it's very, again, it's, it's, it's going to be person per person. It's going to depend on the business, you know, for you to say, or for me to say, Hey, this is really good for you. This way of doing things is really the only way that is really good, or this is completely bad because, you know, that's, that's, that's not compatible with, with the way of, mm. of how we do stuff, for example, in Europe, in, in the United States. So again, you have to, you know, look at this like case by case, I guess, but uh, of course there are always pros and cons. And, you know, China has showcased that like uh, this, this directive approach you know, have been able to, uh, you know, stop the, stop the virus very quickly, you know, and, and get everybody involved very quickly. And I think this is, this is definitely something that, you know, let's say we can, we can learn from, you know, we can, we can, we can look at it, we can assess it, we can say like, hey, like we can maybe use 80% of it, we don't have to, we don't have to use 100% of it, but like, we should definitely look around and extract, you know, the good that we can use and, and get better, you know, collectively. So, so that's, that's, that's how I look at it. What do you think will uh, China focus on in terms of startups, development, innovation? How will China future essentially look like in the digital and business sense? What are the strategic industries? What, where do you see most of activities in terms of innovation? What do you see has been reshuffled through this new normal, through this coronavirus mm -hmm. outbreak? What's next? Yeah, I think I think in terms of you know again, and it probably comes down to the to the government what the government you know kind of considers important uh, as important. I think you know the the major industries are probably not going to change. You know, meaning mm -hmm. that like it will we're we're still going to focus on AI, we're still going to focus on new retail, we're still going to focus on these things, new technologies, robotics, and you know, industry 4.0. I think I think this is kind of like you know that's going to be there. You know, and that's not going to change. I think some of those things are just going to be accelerated, you know, much more because suddenly we have been able to test it at scale, you know, during this stress test it as well, <laughs> stress test it and test it at scale. And like, you know, of course, you know, uh, and I, I don't have any numbers and I don't know, but like, you know, we could have seen that some of the companies were deploying the autonomous vehicles and like the autonomous robots to deliver things, you know, during the pandemic and the outbreak. And they, you know, that's, that's probably going to stick around. Like we knew that it's going to happen anyways. Now it's probably going to happen faster. And maybe because they saw that it can actually help, maybe more money is going to, is going to, is going to go into that. Right. So I think the, you know, the, the general strategic industries are probably, probably not going to change in any way. It's just the, the level of execution and, and the amount of money that is going to be, that is going to be poured into that. I think, of course, you know, what makes to total sense to think right now is that, you know, more money is going to go into healthcare and into mm. these things and maybe even prevention of these things, mm. because uh, of course, you know, it's not only only China that have been through it. The whole world is through it. And China has been facing a lot of criticism all over the world for, you know, this thing. And so uh, basically, I think, I think you know, uh, there is going to be more like strategic uh, thinking, like how do we prevent this? You know, how do we make sure that it's not going to happen at that scale, you know, in the future? And so I think that maybe could be like, you know, the, the force that is going to shift the gears a little bit in certain industries and in certain aspects. And, uh, you know, so, so that's, that's just how I would think about like what new is going to come, you know, to the market, uh, you know, or even in terms of technology and innovation. Perfect. And the last question would be, 
international companies, be them well-funded startups or established businesses that are right now thinking to bring their product, service, whatever, into the China market, what advice would you give them? What shall they do? Yeah, uh, it's a good one. You know, I think, again, uh, it's a little bit more complicated right now because even if you want to come and unless you have team already here, you basically cannot come to China right now. And Physically, we don't know you cannot how it, visit, yeah. Yeah, you cannot visit. You, you know, even if, even if you have like company here, if you're a foreigner who has been running a company for 20 years and you, you went out of China, you cannot, you cannot come back right now, right? So I think, I think this is definitely a complication for many businesses and, you know, for even people that were maybe thinking to, to you know, start the office here and stuff like that. So I think this is just one thing to definitely, to definitely watch and, you know, be, just be ready for, you know, the time when, when it's back to normal. But, you know, the advice that I would give is that, uh, you know, if you really want to give, uh, if, you, if you really want to come to China, if that's the long-term plan, then, you know, I would definitely look for those opportunities that exist in the market right now because, you know, I see it that what happened to me with some of the clients or some of the companies in Shenzhen that maybe were kind of hard to get before. You know, they're, they're much more open to, to talk now. They're much more open to, you know, like brainstorm, like what can we do together? Because they're mm -hmm. also concerned that like some of these Chinese companies that are much more international than others that are also thinking about, hey, we want to build partnerships globally. We maybe want to expand our business globally. They're also thinking like, how do we stay connected to the world? Because now mm -hmm. people are not going to come to us. They're not going to visit our, our headquarters as before. And, and we still want to be in touch with relevant people. We still want to meet people from universities and big organizations and institutions, you know? And so they're always like, you know, thinking. And so this is one of the things that you can, you can do, uh, you can leverage for your advantage, right? Because, you know, if you're really thinking long-term and if you know that this is what you want to do, now you know that there's this room in the market, there's this need, and maybe you can even help them a little bit because you have certain you know, resources that they can leverage for their own benefit. And you kind of start the discussion and you, know, you basically try to give and provide value, then you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities to build relationships for the long-term. You know, of course, you probably cannot leverage those relationships right this second, but you know, mm. once it's all over in six months down the road or maybe one year down the road, if you have been able to like, you know, continue the conversation, then mm. you will be able to leverage basically overnight when you come back. And so I would definitely, maybe just to summarize, it's really the long-term thinking, building relationships, looking, uh, looking for the ways and opportunities to actually you know, reach out and you know, to start the conversation with those companies that you want to do business in the long term. Not necessarily sell them on something right now, but maybe help or maybe try to find the win-win situations, you know, with them. So that's, that's probably what I, would, what I would focus on, you know, these days when the situation is so unstable still. And this is super in line with what's happening in the B2C sector. B2B sector, you're talking about building a relationship because right now, finally, all these companies will respond to you and you have the opportunity to connect and uh, start this conversation to later on leverage this connection. In the B2C sector, the same thing. It is the most perfect opportunity to actually yeah. start building your community. Build your community first. Start the conversation, engage people. And then, of course, once you have the community, you can always sell and expose your products and services, etc. So um, in many, many ways, and we've seen also in terms of advertising and marketing, let's say, we've seen big tech companies also supporting the small guy, their advertiser. They would, for instance, give free traffic and they would say, okay, yeah. we will help you reach more people, etc. So everybody kind of what I love about China's situation right now is that it seems that the tech, tech community, the people, the uh, local provincial governments, et cetera, et cetera, they really came together. They stood together to sort of say, okay, we are probably um, past the most difficult time, the, mo the biggest outbreak, but right now let's focus on the economy. How can we help? I know that provincial governments are actually giving out uh, digital coupons so people would yeah. keep spending and that would support businesses and businesses are offering a lot of their services. They're extending again, a lot of services either free of charge or at a discount, etc. And then uh, this whole kind of economy, I believe that in unity there is power. Yes. Jan, thank you so much for being with us today. Follow Jan on LinkedIn. Jan is also on Instagram, Twitter. 
follow him for sure. His hashtag is your China guy. You will not <laughs> miss it. And definitely connect mm -hmm. if you are one of those well-funded startups or financial institutions looking help in mainland China. Yan is clearly your China guy.